Hello, I'm Colonel Jason Fettig, and I'm here with the fabulous musicians of the President's Own United States Marine Band here at our home in John Philip Sousa Rehearsal Hall in Washington, D.C. We're continuing a new series we've begun called the Digital Rehearsal Hall. Many of you know what the Marine Band sounds like in performance or in broadcast, but we wanted to show you a little bit of what we do to prepare for those performances. And today we have a special treat for you, one of the greatest pieces ever written for winds, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart's Serenade No. 10, The Grand Partita. We haven't played this piece in performance for a couple of years, and we just read through it for the first time yesterday again, and today we're beginning our actual work in rehearsal, and you get to watch those very first steps of preparing this piece. We're gonna play a little bit of the first movement for you today, and maybe a little bit of one of the slow movements too. We hope you enjoy this digital rehearsal hall for Mozart's masterpiece. Let's go ahead and tune Trevor, please. Okay, first movement, please. Wonderful. Let's work a little bit here on the intro before we get into the allegro. Thank you so much, everybody. So the beginning uh, three bars of this in the Largo, if we could create maybe just a tad more drama in the dotted eighth sixteenth, beep, ah, bum, bum. So yes, a true sixteenth, but maybe a bit more articulation on the sixteenth. Uh, and then, Patrick, you can do this differently every time. This is clearly an opera overture, so if you want to play around with this, I'll wait for you uh, and everybody else to get those, those three declarations. Once we get to the, the little tiptoe section, Andrew and Trevor, in here, you could probably put just a bit more articulation behind these spiked, these, uh, these eighth notes, and then the opposite kind of feeling for you. So you're having this kind of dialogue and can't quite tell who's going to take charge of the style through there. And then a lot of drama, again, through the, any kind of dotted figure we have, uh, 16th through uh, that measure, uh, 11 into 12, be da dee da da We can build uh, a lot of tension through there into these releases into the piano. One more time at the top, please, for me. For Anne. <laughs> Still a real 16th. That's it, good, that's it, wonderful. And then the release is on beat three. Let's hold all the way through with the forte and then a really definitive release on, uh, on the end of that quarter note, leaving the space for the clarinet, which 
you're soft, so you kind of emerge from the texture, as you know. One more time, and we'll keep going. Four, and. That's great. Now, real forte. Thank you so much. And I think what we did there of letting the tempo move a little bit is right. I don't think we should be too stuck into this subdivided four. So that's a moment where clearly if we want to push just a bit, I really like what you did. So I will follow along. I would invite you bassoons, bassets, and clarinets, to, uh, oboes I should say, to be a little bit more espressivo on these four eighth notes coming up in measure um, nine and ten. The clarinets are already automatically expressive because they have the syncopated figure, so we can kind of follow suit. Just maybe a little bit of a hairpin on each of those would be appropriate. Uh, let's just take that and we'll keep going this time. I want to get into the allegro. How about uh, eight? Right on the downbeat of eight is fine with the harmonization here. Four and. Janet's is good. together. Just let me talk to our audience here for just a minute. So these musicians don't actually need me for this piece. In fact, a lot of times this piece is done without a conductor at all, and there's beautiful things that happen when a chamber group plays without a conductor. It's a little bit more free a lot of times. Decisions are made kind of on the fly, spontaneously. And so what I want to do in this rehearsal as we get working on this is to try to cultivate a little bit of that relationship. So I'm conducting, obviously, but I want this to be a collaboration, and so we're going to work a little bit on trying to find that freedom that comes with chamber music. So in that spirit, everybody, um, this little uh, solo we have with Trevor and then with Patrick for you guys, Bassets, I want you to just totally just follow whatever Patrick is doing and, and Trevor in that thing, and I will follow you guys, and then I'll rejoin you on the forte uh, chord, seventh chord, before we jump into this allegro. Can we just take that ending one more time, and then I promise we'll go on. Let's do 12. 12, and this is all the way to the end of two for the chord with a, a, a soft release, but definitely sustained through. Right on 12, please. Four, and.
Mozart was trying to impress, we think, uh, the prince with this piece. So this piece is, as you, as you know, but for the benefit of our audience as well, is a combination of a light serenade, you know, which would have been, of course, outdoor music, uh, music that would have been entertaining, music of the people, which is what bands are all about, and then also a serious symphonic piece, you know, something that was designed to be uh, played in a concert and something that was designed to also impress the audience with Mozart's composing skill. So I think I tell you this in this rehearsal because I think it's something that we should endeavor to try to have a lot of fun with the moments that are supposed to be a little bit more rambunctious and a little bit more playful. Right out of the gate in the Allegro, for me personally, I think that fifth bar and all the 2Ds here should have a real kind of rustic jump on people, people. There's no timpani, so you guys have a timpani. But if you can imagine that we've got timpani in here and it really has the, the, the buoyancy of the eighth notes is what drives this. And then for all of you in the woodwinds, upper woodwinds, don't be afraid to put a little bit of accents on these syncopations just to have it really have this uplifting, light, joyous approach. Same thing when we go into the minor. And while we're stopped, just to kill a couple birds with one stone, uh, there's so much canonic stuff in here, as you know. You know this piece very well. So please allow yourselves to be influenced by each other. Um, in the bum ba dum ba ba da dum beam ba ba da dum beam ba ba da dum beam. I mean, have a little battle across the way. Balance wise, I think oboes, you probably need to come out just a bit in that section 30, 31, 32. Horns, uh, maybe back off just a hair here so we can hear what's going on. 29, 30, that, all of that stuff that you've got with all four of you playing. When we get to the second part with the bassets, the second statement of the theme, uh, measure 40 and through that. I think you guys can save a little bit of your kind of sun coming out through the clouds until we get to that eighth note run at 47, 48. So I would be a little bit more sotto voce, um, real buoyant articulation for the bassoons, and then that can be the extension where you kind of let your arms open up a little bit and then back down into the piano for the oboes. Is that enough? I think that's enough. One more time. Let's do the second time through the allegro. We'll keep going. Molto allegro second time. One and two. A little softer if we could. Really maximize the pianos. Surprise! And up. Same thing here. And. for stopping here, but can we make a little bit more of the fortes in those forte pianos? So, um, so I think... That would be fine. Is uh, One of the things I'm going to harp on is just the quality of the forte pianos. Like, how long does the forte last? In this case, I think it's going to be gesture dependent. So I think if you need to hang on for a little bit longer, that's okay. Later on in white notes, I'll probably ask you guys to be a little, get to the piano a little sooner than we otherwise have been. But I don't think we should shy away from the fortes. I think what makes this Mozart is these moments of just kind of uh, sparkle that come through those dynamic, dynamic changes. Uh, while we're stopped, Cadence points, there's so many five bar phrases in this piece, like he has an extension, which is so clever for Mozart where like there's an extra bar 
and I think we should charge through to those cadence points. So in forte cadences that feel like they've got an extra bar, shum bum 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 bum. Let's really intentionally go to that. I think that's what makes this jump off the page. That's uh, right where we were, 35 to 39. Let's start right there, please, and get one more facet duet, if we could, and then we'll keep going. 35, please, 35, right on. A one and two. <laughs> kind of a false recap here at 139. Let's put a little retard there, I think, just the tiniest bit on B2. We don't want to over-romanticize it, uh, but a little bit of that is nice. Uh, this section here in the middle of this development, 121, 122, where he's got the fragment of the main theme, sometimes slurred for you guys, sometimes tongued with the, uh, a grace note as usual. This is all in the original manuscript, so it was definitely a deliberate Let's make a bigger deal out of that difference. So oboes, be da ba da, da clarinets, pa di da da. Maybe even lengthen the second quarter a bit just to make it obvious that you're being more expressive. This is again operatic. Um, this is right in the heyday of Mozart's fame as an opera composer and his success as an opera composer. Really, Mozart was an opera composer first and a symphonist and a chamber music composer second. So this piece was written around the same time as some of his most famous operas. It definitely feels like an opera, which is strange because it's a wind ensemble piece, which would have been very unusual. At the time, Mozart was also making transcriptions for wind groups of his operas, so I think he was probably thinking of that a little bit when he composed this. So when I hear this piece, I hear it as an opera. I hear all of the segments, um, not all of them, but most of them with an operatic quality, and I think that's the thing that really speaks to who, what Mozart was all about. So when we get to this section um, with the surprise at 126, four, five, six, 127, oboes, you have a, as much of a forte as you can possibly give me. Uh, a little bit shalm like would be okay here, just for a moment. Um, and let's go ahead and slur the, the B flat to the A flat. I, it's not in the manuscript, but I think it, it me, needs to be because that's what happens in the, in the bassoons. Can you guys, uh, bass and bassoons, can you give me any more sound on that entrance in 127? 
And you can pop those syncopations a little bit so we can hear them through the texture. Another canon, oboes and bassoons. You're really a bassoonist for this purpose, Aaron, uh, in this moment. Let's take right there, please, 116, where the bassets have uh, the, the main theme and then we move into something else. 116. One and two. And uh, Now mysterious here. No slow. Just a little here. Tiniest bit. Again, rock. <laughs> Keep the energy going. Dakota, just a couple more things here. It's it's so good. I'm such a joy to conduct and work with this, work on this with you. Um, we're moving into different territory here. Obviously, 180, 181. Another little mini development before we get to the coda. Can we save a little bit of this forward momentum, phrase-wise and dynamic-wise, especially around 194, 195? so that it feels like we're going somewhere. This is not only with the chromatic moments in the upper winds, but horns, beam, beam, bum, ba. Anytime you have three quarters, let's save a little dynamic on the white notes so we can push through to the next one on those quarters. It'll make the ending a little more exciting when we get through there. Um, be careful not to let the quarter notes on syncopated figures get too short. So we're going beat up ba. We're snapping that grace note on the beat, which is correct. But I think we're chopping the quarter maybe a little too much. Beat up ba, beat up ba, be ba. Keep it melodic. Uh, it's not a rhythmic gesture as much as a melodic gesture. And oboes, you're on the beat on the end of one and 183, correct? Be ba da ba ba ba. Yeah, I mean, you could accent that. You're the only people that have it. So why don't you smack it a little bit so we hear that through everybody else playing. All right. I don't think we're going to get to the second movement, everybody, but we're going to finish up the first. Let's take, please, back to 164. 164 clarinets. Keep these eighth notes, staccato eighth notes, as buoyant and as joyous as you can make them. 164. One and two. Good. Thank you. 
would you think, everybody, if we didn't take any time on the E diminished chord and 219? I followed you, you all felt it together, but if we charge through it, we could try that. That way it's a little more of a surprise for the grand prize. Can we just try it and see what that feels like? Let's take it right there, please. 216, right on the B flat. Jump, bump, bump, and the, the length of the note is great. I love this kind of round, bouncy, kind of slightly pudgy kind of feeling. That's what we want here. Uh, right there, 216. One, and <sighs> Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode of our digital rehearsal hall, a little bit of seeing behind the scenes of how we work on this wonderful masterpiece. Please do keep your eyes open for our broadcast of the entire Grand Partita of Mozart coming up very soon. Thanks again for joining us and stay safe and stay healthy. <laughs>